Okay, so this is my latest game, uh, written in Python and Pygame. It's a bubble shooter game, kind of like Puzzle Bobble or Best Move, that kind of thing. So why don't we fire it up? And uh, one thing to, to say is that the screen recording in QuickTime slows down my computer quite a lot. So as you can see, the bubbles will move really slowly. But in the actual program running when screen recording isn't happening, it's quite fast and it's probably what you'd expect in a normal bubble shooter. But yeah, this is the game. Uh, got some fun music. There's actually three songs that play, so when this one's done, it uh, a new song plays and then so on and then it just loops back to the first one. I um, mean, yeah, it, uh, so it's a classic bubble shooter game. If you get three in a row, it pops the bubbles. There's a, there's a nice cork pop sound effect when you, uh, when you match them up. And, uh, and yeah, that's the game. Yeah, so why don't I just stop there? Uh, there's not much to say, really, for the gameplay. Uh, in the bottom right corner is your next color that comes up, and then when you shoot, it disappears. Because then you don't want to be distracted by that color, because you don't want to think that's the next color. So, but once it hits the new bubble, it uh, a new color appears. It's actually just a white rectangle that I, uh, that I just blit on the screen over top of it, just to cover it up. Just made the code easier for some reason. That's another song. That's kind of nice. Uh, Stephen O'Brien composed it. Uh, I got it off his SoundCloud account. Uh, talented composer, and he gives away his co his uh, music for free. Um, okay, so yeah, um, this program has been pretty fun actually to make. Uh, I learned a lot making it. Uh, I had to use trigonometry to get those angles, uh, cos and cosine and tangent to to figure out exactly how. The, what direction the bubbles to move. So basically it's how many pixels to the right and how many pixels up per cycle. And that in that you use uh, you use uh, trigonometry. And I also learned about classes. I realized that yeah I probably should actually be using these things called classes. Uh, I have one just for the bubble, the arrow, and the score, but Man, I wish I had one for the, the actual bubble array, for all the bubbles that are stuck, because it, it felt kind of like too late now, because I had so much of this code, right, and to refactor it just seemed like a nightmare, and it just seemed easier to just to add to it, but if I had done that originally and made just a bubble array as, my, as a custom class and had some methods with that, I probably would have saved a lot of time debugging. Um, yeah, and another thing I learned about was recursion. That was fun. I, I didn't actually understand recursion before this project. Uh, let's just scroll down. So this is the, uh, the pop floaters function. Uh, actually, what I should do is not that one. There's another. There's another function. Here's here we go. Pop bubbles. So w the way this works is that. So here are my base cases. So. Uh, and then what it does is that when you when the bubble hits the other bubbles, it checks to see if it if the next color is if the next bubble that it touches is uh, is the same color, and if so, it it adds it to a list that I have called the delete list, and and then we re and then the delete list in the main function we check to see if it's uh, oops. Um, for some reason I'm not seeing it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it. But anyways, if the delete list has more than three items in it, what it does is the program knows to, to delete those from the array itself. And uh, another thing that was really difficult was how to check for the floaters. So the bubbles that, after you pop bubbles, sometimes there'll be bubbles that are just hanging out because even though they weren't the same color, they're not, so 
they're, they weren't the same color as the mashed ones. So when you pop the three bubbles in a row, sometimes there'll be bubbles that are completely surrounded by white space. And to do that, it took me a while to figure out actually how to do it. So now I have, so I kind of had to start from the top of the, of the bubble array. I'll show you. So the way it works is that it starts up here and then it works its way down to see where the bubbles are and it has to do that for every uh, every every branch. So sometimes there'll be just bubbles here and then space and then bubbles here. So it checks for each branch and then it checks where those bubbles are and then deletes everything on the array and then adds with only those bubbles that they found to that array. And that solved the problem of the uh, of the floaters. So for example, before what would happen is that if the if the blue got popped, that the the light blue one would just hang out. But now oh well, I missed, but the idea is that it would pop and then that would know to pop that one as well. Uh, yeah, so that's my program. There's no new levels, it's just one level randomly generated, and once you complete it, it asks you to restart if you want to. Um, yeah, that's the program. I hope you like it. It was a lot of fun to make. My first real game, I made Pong and and uh, and Tic-Tac-Toe, but they're not really that fun to play, to be honest, and you can't play it by yourself either. Uh, but yeah, this is my first real game with Pi Game, and I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks for watching.